This is part 16 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to upload a file to a server using Razor Pages framework. We want the edit Razor page to look like this. In our previous video, we discussed updating the employee's name, email and department fields. In this video, we'll discuss how to delete the employee's existing photo and upload a new photo. The first thing that we want to do is display employee's existing photo. For that, we're going to create a variable called photo path. And if you remember, all our employee photos are present in this folder images. And this folder is in turn present in www root folder. At the moment, we have the employees hard coded within our mock employee repository class. And notice employee has got photo path property. And this property is set to the name of the associated photo. So for Mary, it is mary.png for john it is john.png so on and so forth and this variable right here is going to compute the complete path to the employee photo so the photos are present in the images folder and to that we are appending the value that we have in photo path property if a given employee does not have a photo associated with him this property will be null if it is null then use this image no image.jpg once we have the photo path computed we then in include an image element and set its source attribute to this photo path variable. And then we discussed the use of this append version tag helper in our previous videos in this series. And this class here is our custom class and it is present in this file site.css and all it's doing is setting the height to 200 pixels and width to auto. And the rest of the classes that we see right here are bootstrap 4 classes for styling. In the edit razor page within this code block right here let's include the photo path variable and then we want to display the employees existing photo after this department drop down list right here this is the html that displays the employees existing photo so let's include this code block right after the department drop down list save our changes and take a look at the browser there we go. We have the employee's existing photo. Now let's cancel. Go to the employee list page. Click edit on this employee. Notice now we see Mary photo. Next, we want a file upload control to be able to upload a new photo for the employee. And we want the file upload control to look like this. To achieve this, in the page model class, we are going to include a property with this name photo and notice the data type of this property is iform file. We'll discuss in just a bit why we have set the property type to iform file and we also decorated this property with bind property attribute. With this attribute in place, when we select a new photo using the file upload control and then submit this form, ASP.NET Core model binding is going to automatically bind the selected photo to this property which we can then use to save that photo on the server. We'll see that in action in just a bit. And then we will include an input element and set its ASP-4 tag helper to photo. When ASP.NET Core detects the data type of this property is iform file, it's going to automatically generate an input element where the type is set to file and that's going to provide us this file upload control. And then next to the file upload control, we want this label photo that's going to be generated by this label right here and within the file upload control itself this is the text that we want click here to change photo and that is generated by this label right here and all these classes that you see form group pro call sm2 etc all these are bootstrap 4 classes for styling in the edit page model class let's include photo property iPhone file is present in microsoft asp.net core http namespace so let's bring that in we want the file upload control to be present between the department drop-down list and the employee photo right here. And this is the HTML that's going to generate the file upload control. So within the edit razor page, after the department drop-down list, let's include the HTML that we have seen on the slide. Save all these changes and take a look at the browser. There we go. 
we have the file upload control as expected. At the moment, there is a small issue with this control. Notice when I select a new file to upload, john.png in this case, the name of the selected file is not displayed in this control. But when I hover the mouse over this file upload control, notice the name of the file is displayed as tooltip. So to fix this issue, we have to write a bit of custom jQuery code. Let me paste that code just before the closing form tag right here. This is straightforward code. First, we are finding an element that has this class, custom file input. And this is our file upload input element. Notice it has the class, custom file input. So once we have the file upload control selected, we are binding to its change event handler. When the selected file in the file upload control changes, we want to execute these two lines of code. And this first line right here is retrieving the selected file name. And once we have the file name, we want to display that file name in the label that is at the moment displaying this message. Click here to change photo. And this is the line that does that. So we are selecting an element that has this class, custom file label. And that is this label. Notice at the moment, it is displaying this message. Click here to change photo. So once we select that label, we are then displaying the file name that we have in that label. So this is straightforward jQuery code. If you're new to jQuery, please check out our jQuery tutorial for beginners course. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now when we select a file, the selected file name is displayed as expected. At this point, if we click this update button, this form will be posted to the server and this onPost method will be executed. So within this method, we want to check if this photo property is not null. If it is not null, then that means the user has selected a new photo to be uploaded. So let's first check if the photo property is not null. If photo property is not null, then we want to set the photo path property of the employee object to the selected file name. And to compute the selected file name, we are going to use this private method. This generates a unique file name for every photo that we upload. So the first thing that we are doing here is creating a variable to store that generated unique file name. And then we are checking if the photo property is not null. If it is not null, then we know user has selected a new photo to upload. And we upload all the photos to this images folder. And this images folder is present inside the www root folder. And to get the absolute physical path of this www root folder, we are using ASP.NET Core built-in service, iWebHost environment service. So the first thing that we want to do is inject this service into our edit razor page using the constructor. Let's call the parameter web host environment. We need to bring in the namespace. And let's also generate the required private field. So using this built-in iWebHost environment service that we just injected, we get the absolute physical path to www root folder. And then to this, we are appending the images folder. This gives us the complete path to uploads folder. And then we are generating a unique file name by appending a new grid to the actual file name. So this will ensure no two files have the same name. Even if two users select a file with name john.png, this grid will be different. So every uploaded file will have a unique file name. And then we are combining the unique file name with the uploads folder path. So this is going to give us the complete file path. And then we are creating the file stream and copying it to this specified file path. And then finally, we are returning the generated unique file name. So let's include this process uploaded file method within our edit razor page. Let's paste the private method after the on post method right here. We need to bring in the required namespace system.io. And then let's call this method process uploaded file right here. Now 
Look at this employee Mary that we are editing at the moment. For this employee, the existing photo is this Mary.png. But for this employee, we are now uploading a new photo, John.png. So before we set this as the photo for this employee, we have to delete this existing photo. And here is the code required for that. How do we know if an employee already has an existing photo? Well, if the photo path property is not null, then the employee already has an existing photo. So we again use the built-in i webhost environment service to get the physical path to www root folder. And then to that, we append the images folder because that's where we have all employee photos. And to that, we append the actual photo name, which is again present in photo path property. So this is going to give us the complete file path and then we use file.delete method to delete that employee photo. And then set the photo path property to the newly uploaded file name. And we know this process uploaded file method is going to generate the unique file name for the newly uploaded file. And then we call the update method to update the employee object. So let's include this if block now. Before we set the employee photo path to the newly uploaded file, let's check if the employee already has an existing photo and delete that if present. And then let's run our project in debug mode. There we go. Our project is running in debug mode. Let's navigate to the employees list page and then click edit on this first employee, Mary. We see her existing details, including the existing photo. Now let's select a new photo. I'm going to select john.png for this employee. And then before we click the update button, let's place a breakpoint in the on post method right here and then click the update button. Our breakpoint is hit. Notice when I have the mouse over this photo property, it is null. Why are we not able to see this newly selected file john.png? Well, that's because we have forgot to set enc type attribute on the form element. So let's stop debugging. If we have a file upload control on our form, we have to set this attribute to multipart slash form data. So with this change in place, let's run our project again in debug mode. Let's select john.png and then click update. Notice now the photo property is not null. And when I expand this, we can see the name of the newly uploaded file, john.png. But if we take a look at this photo path property on the employee object, it is null. But if we look at this employee that we are editing, Mary, she already has an existing photo. So why is this photo path property null? Before we understand that, let's inspect the other properties of the employee object. Notice all the other properties like ID, name, department, and email, they have values except the photo path property. All these values are coming from these input elements on our razor page. So the ID value is coming from this hidden input element, name is coming from this input element, similarly email and department. So when this form is posted back to the server, model binding is going to map all these values to the corresponding properties on this employee object. But we do not have any input element to hold photo path. So let's do that using another hidden input element. Before that, let's stop debugging. and then change the property here to employee.photopath. Save our changes and then run the project again in debug mode. Notice our breakpoint is hit again. Photo property is not null. Photo path is also not null. Mary.png, that is the employee's existing photo. We have to delete this first before we upload this new photo, john.png. So let's step over the code. Notice we have the full path to Mary.png. And at the moment, if we take a look at the images folder, we still have Mary.png. And this line right here is going to delete that file. So let's step over. And if we take a look at the images folder now, notice we no longer have Mary.png. We now need to upload the new photo, john.png. And that is done by this process 
uploaded file method. So let's step over. So we are in process uploaded file method. Notice we have the path to the uploads folder. So until images and then we have the unique file name. Notice to the actual file name john.png we have a grid appended with an underscore and then we combine the uploads folder path with the file name and then we get the complete path to the file. So let's place a breakpoint here and then continue execution. Notice now the employee photo path is set to the newly uploaded photo and if we take a look at the images folder we have that new uploaded photo. Let's continue execution. We are redirected to the employees list page but we don't see the newly uploaded photo for Mary. That's because if we take a look at the update method which actually updates the employee object and that update method is right here within our mock employee repository. We are only updating name, email and department. We are not updating the photo path property. So let's make a copy of this line and also update photo path property. Stop debugging and then run our project again in debug mode. Navigate to the employees list page. Click edit on Mary and let's change the photo john.png click update our breakpoint is hit again let's continue the execution there we go we now see the newly uploaded photo as well but if we stop debugging and then run this project again notice we don't see Mary photo why is that? Well, that's because at the moment we are only making changes in memory. So when we restart our application, the photo path property for all these employees default to the hard coded values that we have here. So for Mary, the photo path property value is Mary.png, but we don't have that image anymore in the images folder. We have deleted it permanently. So that's the reason we don't see the photo for Mary. We should not have this problem when we move this data over to a SQL Server database. We'll do that in our upcoming videos. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.